First of all, I want to tell you the inspiration behind the bill. You are a big part of it because your bulldog approach to reporting on this issue, you latched on and you never let go. That was very inspiring. Could not have stated that better myself. Thank you, Sierra Cummings of the Atlanta News First Network, and thank you, Representative Okoye, for putting this legislation forward to protect Georgia homeowners. This is one of two major pieces of legislation that protects middle-class America, homeowners in this state, from both squatters, and in this case, deed theft, from very unscrupulous people. But how does deed theft happen? We're going to talk about it here on the Ujama Network. I'm Antoine Anderson. Let's get into it. Atlanta News First Investigations inspired Georgia State Representative Gabe Okoye to sponsor House Bill 1292. Its goal? In the troubling trend of deed theft. For nearly a year, we uncovered case... My home was stolen from me. ...after case after case, proving a minor loophole wreaks major havoc. This is not right. Our reporting found under Georgia law, no identification was required to file a deed on a home. In effect, you did not have to prove you own the property, meaning fraudsters were forging deeds, transferring titles, stealing houses right from under Metro Atlanta families. You can't even imagine the, the stress and worry one would have to go through if you are faced with something like this. You have paid off your home, and you own it outright and somebody just says no you don't and just takes you to court and it's just amazing that this is even allowed to go through and why someone is not in jail for a very very long time but this is what this is what happens in primarily our community as you looked at some of those faces you saw one reoccurring theme now i'm not sure what the racial makeup is of the people who are being affected by this, but we know where the majority of those home sales were. We know which target demographic single family rental corporations target those first time homeboys, those low income homes, especially in gentrified areas like this one. It is no wonder you have such a high number of people of this community that fall victim to this kind of action. Those people that have seen me on your show, on your reporting, I don't even know if any of them ever recovered their homes yet. No. No. People like Eric Clark, he first met the father back in September 2023. Today, do you own your home again? Not yet. I'm still in court fighting. Not only was a fake deed filed on his home, according to police reports, but also a second mortgage taken out, too. A loan he says he never paid because he never knew about it until it was too late. His home was foreclosed, and now the new owners make him pay rent on the property he once owned for 20 years. And how that man went on to say he's paying like twenty-four or $2,800 a month for a home he already owns for a loan he never took out or received the proceeds from. It only makes me angrier that the person who initiated this fraud is getting away scot-free and he is being made a victim again because he's renting a house he owns. That's some cold work. Well, that is until this bill goes past Governor Kemp's desk and it is slated to do so as it has passed both the Georgia Senate and the House and is being supported by none other than our friends Mr. Matt Rees out of the 99th district. He was also instrumental on the squatters bill that recently passed. So it is good to see that common sense legislation, bipartisan legislation is still possible in this day and age to protect Georgia homeowners. I am so proud of the representation that we have right now when it comes to these issues. It gives me a little bit of pause so that I know that it's not always about the rhetoric. Sometimes it's about the bills and protecting the people, which is why these individuals are in the places they're in. 